Hi everyone, today I'm going to be going through some of our Gator Social Plus features uh, within the product and just walking you through um, all the features that come with um, the Plus package of Gator Social. Um, so in order to get to Gator Social uh, from your dashboard, um, what you'll need to do is just go over to the top bar here and then click on your Gator Social account below. Um, this isn't actually um, the Gator Social account I'm going to be uh, training you guys in today, so I'm just going to go over to this tab here. But this is essentially what it will look like uh, once you do open that up. So this is your um, dashboard, and I'm going to go into the dashboard um, a bit later um, and walk you through each of these different kind of sections of Gator Social. Um, however, first of all, we like to kind of start in the settings. Um, so that's what I'm going to do first. So your settings, if you just click this little bubble here, you can see you've got your settings, my profile and billing at the top here. Um, so the first thing you'll want to do when you kind of start off your account is actually change the time settings. Um, so time settings are actually set in two different places. Um, it's on an account level, um, which you will find in this section, but it's also um, on a profile level as well uh, for each user in here. So I believe it's automatically set to American time. Um, so if, if, if that's not what you want, you'll need to change it in both. So if we start off by going to my profile, you see you've just got some details like name, email, and then here you've got the time zone which you'll want to select. So this one's already been changed to um, UK time, uh, but you will need to do that here. And then you can also change your language as well here as well. Um, you've also got some other details um, that you can change in the My Profile section. Um, if, if you are on Gator Social Plus, um, you probably won't need to change these roles because you've only got the one user. Um, but you can also change your notification settings, update your password, and you've also got your API key details here as well. So once we've changed the time settings in my profile, what we want to do is then go and change them in the account settings as well. So I'm just going to head back over here to settings. Um, so the first thing to do to change the settings here, again, it looks really similar to um, how we were when we were in my profile, is again, just select it from this drop down to uh, whichever time zone um, you need. Um, other details you can also put in this section are a phone number and your company's website. It's not necessary, but um, you can do it. Um, you can put it in there if you want. Uh, currency, I would recommend changing um, because this is what we use for the conversions and uh, the revenue that those conversions are estimated to be making. Um, so you just want to put in whichever currency you use here. So I'm just going to go down to the next section now, which is social profiles. So here you are able to connect up to 10 social profiles, and these can be business or personal. Um, and for each one, you can actually set up queue settings, um, which I'll go into in a second. The way you connect your social profile is to just click this blue button here. And this will bring up this little window and then you can select whichever one you want to connect. And once you click it, it will take you to a page where you can put in your sign-in details, and then that will connect the account here. Once you've got your account connected, if you just hover over it, you've got these little gray buttons that appear. And what you can do is if you, the second one here, edit queue settings, um, you will want to probably um, change these and amend them to what, what you know, your company needs. Basically, when you are posting, you can set a post to be queued to a, um, just the next scheduled time. So, for example, I may not want, uh, if I've got two Facebook um, accounts, I may not want posts to be going out at the exact same time everywhere. I might want to kind of gradually just um, schedule it out a bit, a bit further apart. So I might want, say, 9 till 10 on a Monday for this account, but maybe on another account, I'll want it 10 to 11. So that way, when you are scheduling posts to different accounts, it, it won't be kind of conflicting with each other. So once you've got your social social profiles um, connected, um, you can then go down to integrations as well. Um, we do have a variety of different integrations that you can um, connect with. So if I just click add integration, as you can see, there's quite a few different options um, that 
that's kind of integrations that work well with Gator Social Plus. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in any of these, um, feel free to contact us if you need more information, or you can click it and it should be um, self-explanatory, you know, again, logging in with your details and stuff like that. Webhooks isn't actually a feature available um, with Gator Social Plus at the moment, um, so we're just going to ignore that section um, for today. So I'm just going to move on to extras. So within extras, uh, you've got a mobile app and a browser extension. The mobile app is basically a slimmed down version um, for mobile, um, so which just allows you to create and edit your posts via mobile as well. And then the browser extension is literally a little extension that you can um, add onto Chrome, whichever browser you, you use. And then if you are on, say, a particular article that you think um, your contacts would be interested in and you want to post that, then you can literally simply click the browser extension icon and that will bring up a small window um, just showing you um, that, that article as a post and then you can just quickly post it out from there. So moving on to tracking now, um, the first section um, in tracking is the actual code itself. Um, so you can put this code into the header of the pages um, that you wish to get, you know, the benefits of like conversion tracking and lead capture from. Um, so for example, you might want to put this code on your demo pages or maybe, you know, con contact us or pricing, stuff like that. So if someone clicks on a link, in one of your social um, posts and then they end up on that page which has the code in the header then we can we are able to kind of track that and then um, show you that as a conversion and if you've put a revenue down for that conversion also show you the estimated revenue that you know you'd expect to be getting from that and then we've got UTM tagging. Um, so when you do have your Gator Social account set up, you will need to come here and actually just turn it on because I believe by default um, it's actually turned off. So you just want to click this toggle to turn it on. And we do give you um, sort of default UTM tags already in here. So these ones with the little percentage markers around them will actually pull in that data. So for this one, for example, it's just going to pull in the social network name. Um, so these ones kind of work for you, um, but you're welcome to kind of either remove these, edit these or add in your own. That's absolutely fine. And then we've got the conversions, which I briefly spoke about earlier. Um, so for conversions, basically, you can add a value to a certain web page visit. Um, from a social post. So um, you might expect to receive a particular revenue perhaps um, if someone's visiting a page such as the demo page, um, perhaps maybe you know from a demo you might get £50 um, you'd expect from doing that. Uh, it can just kind of help you get an estimate revenue from those social posts. So to create one you would just click new conversion type and then maybe give it a name. So for example demo and then you can either have it contains, begins with or equals to, and then you want to put part of the page URL. So for this one, I might want to put equals to if I know my page is slash demo. And then, as I said, I might want to give this a value of £50, for example. And then I just click save. So as you can see, that's now um, in place and I can turn that off and on if I, if I need to. Um, but yeah, that, that's really useful and just kind of giving value to the work, you know, you're putting into those social posts. So here you've also got your CNAME DNS record details. Um, these are actually created and managed on your domain host site. Um, and then you just insert your CNAME details here as well. Um, this can be used for some integrations that might it might be needed for some of the integrations that I showed you earlier. Um, it is also used for working with this short link feature, but currently um, we don't actually allow the personalization of the short links. Um, but with the short link section here as well, um, what you can do, so basically with the short links, they're shortened when posting from Octopost. So you haven't got like a really long link um, with added tracking and UTMs and stuff like that. So similar to Bitly, um, if you guys have used that, it just basically shortens it to OKT.TO. 
for the link instead. Um, you can remove the shortening of links if you wanted to do so, um, but if you do, um, please just note this will actually mean that link clicks and conversions won't be tracked. Um, but if you do want to do that, um, you can just click no link shortening and it'll give you this little warning um, to tell you about the tracking not working. So uh, this section here is the user management section. So you've got your users, roles and teams. Um, this section is more for those on an enterprise level account rather than social plus as it is used for accounts with multiple users that wish to give different levels of access perhaps. Um, and, and if you've got a lot of users and you can put them into teams and just give them you know, different sections to work with. So it can be useful for kind of managing that if you have got multiple. Moving on to compliance now, um, again, workflow is for um, enterprise level um, accounts as it's basically creating kind of approval workflows. So maybe you've got one person in charge that um, kind of has the final say on if a post gets approved or not. Um, you can then create a workflow for that process with multiple users reviewing, editing social media posts um, and stuff like that. Uh, but these three down here are in social plus so you've got crisis mode um, crisis mode is basically something that can be activated when needed if you have like a social media crisis um, when you do turn crisis mode on any previous scheduled posts won't be sent out um, you can choose whether these posts should be deleted or put into a draft status um, and you can also set if you know any users are notified when the crisis mode is activated and when you want it to end, it can just be a useful feature if you do have any sort of you know reason to need to stop everything from going out. Um, you've, you've got that available there. And then crisis history is just a history of when crisis mode was turned on. We've also got um, a section here called banned keywords. So here you can define a list of specific keywords and phrases that will be banned from using in posts and replies throughout the account. This will allow you to just kind of enforce compliance um, within your communications um, and just prevent any employers from misusing the social media. Um, there might be just certain things you don't want to be posted. Um, so you can set these here. We're just clicking new list and then just listing any words that you don't want to be used. So once in place, the rule will be enforced immediately. So any future posts, you know, it's not it's going to stop you from posting them if it contains that word or phrase. Um, however, it won't enforce it for posts that were scheduled prior to adding these words in. People database isn't currently a feature um, we have available, but it should be coming soon, I believe. Um, so we won't be going into this today, um, but we will at a later point um, talk to you guys about what this will be able to do. Security is just kind of some general um, information and setting changes that you can do here. So you've got different sessions of when people have been logging on, um, their IP and stuff like that. Um, so it can be useful for, you know, if, you, if you're worried that someone else has logged in to your account or anything like that you can just kind of see who and um, where where they were logging in from you've also got some um, kind of settings here if you want to you know enable single sign-on your password policies for the account um, session settings so you might want every session to expire after an hour or a certain amount of days you can set all this here and also any users that are locked out, you can manage that here. Archives, um, so this feature is basically for any messages or campaigns that are no longer in use. Um, it can be useful kind of as time goes on just to keep your message list tidy. So you might not want you know, messages that you created months and months and months ago to always be in the list. So you can kind of just archive um, things no longer being used over here. And also you've got archived users as well. So that is the settings. Um, now I'm going to move on to the dashboard, which was the first screen you come to when you open up Go to Social Plus. So on the dashboard, you've got these graphs here. So this one is the posts sent. So as you can see, it just kind of gives you all the different posts and the number it was shared over the last 30 days. And if you've 
want to kind of view link clicks instead, you can just click any of these and it will show you the graph in, in full below once you've clicked on it. So that can be really useful just to kind of get a general overview um, for the last month. And then you've also got your most recent campaigns as well, just kind of a short overview such as clicks, conversions, when it was created, um, how many posts have gone out in that campaign. So now I'll move over to the publishing section. So this is where we actually create our campaigns and posts. So um, every social post via Octopost falls into a specific campaign. So for example, you may have an upcoming event that you're publicizing. Um, and so all your posts for that event or that topic on your different social platforms can be assigned to a specific campaign. Um, this basically just enables the organisation and measurement, um, you know, reporting of social posts around a specific marketing activity. Um, so it's just a good way to kind of keep all, all the same sorts of posts in the same place. So the first thing we want to do, so we've got all our list of campaigns um, that have already been created here. But if we want to create a new one, we just want to click new campaign. And that will bring this window up here. Then you want to give your campaign a name. Um, so for example, this one I might just want to call it training social plus. And then I can also add in some tags. Um, tags are quite useful because you can sort of um, later on when you've got you're comparing kind of different campaigns against each other, you can actually kind of filter those down down by the tags um, so it can be good for reporting and stuff later on so if mine my campaign is to do a training I might just give it the tag training for example so now this brings me to the campaign calendar um, obviously we haven't actually got any posts in this new campaign yet so um, I won't actually see that calendar yet so what I want to do is actually click schedule your first post then the first thing I can do is actually select which social media platform I want to use. So I can either have you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, Insta um, sorry, LinkedIn and Instagram. It depends which social media accounts you connected in the settings, um, which we went through at the start. Um, and if you've got multiple, say, Facebook accounts, you could just click on Facebook and then there'd be like a little drop down just here where the name is. You can then enter the content of your post um, and add in a link which will pull in an image from that page um, that you are able to change if you want to. So for example, I could get a BBC News article page and something like that. So if I just go on to BBC News, I could grab an article like this one, copy the URL and then paste it in here. And then if I make this full screen, as you can see, it kind of just gives me a preview of what it's going to look like on both desktop and mobile. So it's grabbed kind of the first image from that article. And I can change this image if I want. I, I can remove the image and change, a new, um, change it to a different one or even add, you know, two different images. Um, but if you do change the image, please note it, it will actually remove the link um, that's behind the image. Um, so you'll just have the link next to a different image rather than if they click on the image itself, it then takes them to that same link. Um, so what you can also do from this screen here is change the campaign that the post is being sent into. So if maybe you've changed your mind and maybe I want it to actually go into June campaign or demo, for example, um, I can do that here. I can also, um, as I said earlier, add extra images uh, and videos. I can choose my audience. Um, with the audience, it actually depends on which social media that you've selected. So for um, Facebook, for example, I can kind of be more specific on the location um, of my audience. Um, if I instead select Twitter, I can't kind of narrow that down further to their location. But I can add my own location to the post um, and that goes the same for Instagram as well. So Facebook and LinkedIn, you can be a bit more specific with who you're sharing it with. 
Um, so for example, LinkedIn has actually got really um, specific target audiences that you can select, um, like geography, company size, etc. Um, but yeah, Twitter and LinkedIn is just adding a location to your post. I can then also select when I want my post to go out. Um, so I might have a specific time and date in mind, um, in which case I can select that here. So I might want it to go out on the 19th at 10.30. Um, and I can also add extra, extra posting times as well. I might want it to go out more than once, in which case you just do it like this. Uh, you can add as many as you need. Um, if you don't have kind of specific times that you want it to go out, what you could do is, um, as I was showing you earlier with the queue settings, so when we added in our social media account, um, I showed you guys that you can kind of click on queue settings and then schedule like a certain time period for each account of when a post can go out. So if I was to just click queue, what it's going to do is just post this out in the next um, slot that my account has. So for example, if I clicked queue now and this Facebook account um, was only allowed to post between you know, nine and 10 on a Tuesday, um, it's gonna wait until you know, the next Tuesday at nine and 10. So that can be quite useful if say, you've got lots of different accounts and you, know, you don't want times and posts to clash. I've also got this feature here to copy to board. Um, so this is actually copying it to the advocacy board, um, which I will talk a little bit about later. Um, but that is um, a feature that you, you might wanna use if you want other people to kind of um, post or, or at least kind of broaden your reach um, by getting your employees to also post um, your post to their own social media accounts. If you uh, are using a campaign that you've had previous um, posts already sent out um, or you've created kind of a list of messages in, then you can select actually a message already pre-done um, using this button here. As this is a new campaign, I haven't actually got any. So if I go to, for example, Trustpilot Reviews, as you can see, I've now got this message button available. So I could click here. And as you can see, these are posts um, we've either already created or um, saved the messages um, for later use. So when you create a, a post like this one, um, once I've you know clicked post it or schedule it, it will save the message and link to the content of that post um, in a message like this one. And then you can just kind of use that uh, later on for, say, like a different um, post that you've got going on just to save some time. So I might want to create this for the 19th. So I'm just gonna set that and then I'm gonna click schedule. So then I'm taken to um, back to my calendar here. Um, and then obviously you'll have all your posts that you, you schedule in this calendar. This is basically just your campaign calendar. You've also got a calendar that contains all the different um, campaigns and posts within those campaigns, but this one is just going to show you the posts within this specific Training Social Plus campaign. And I can create new posts here or even just click on the day and then this little plus icon. So you can do it in a variety of different ways. We've then got this um, messages function here um, too, which was, I was just kind of talking about previously. Um, it's basically like a library that holds all your social content. Um, so you can kind of think of it as a database that saves all your messages so you can easily view them and access them for scheduling later on. Um, so you can, want, it, once you do publish a post, like I said earlier, it will result in that text and link um, being created as a saved message here. Um, otherwise, you can just create a new message in this section um, or even upload a CSV if, say, you've got like a really long list of messages you wish to create. So I could either import it with the CSV here or just create my messages and save them like this. So messages works really well with our auto poster feature. Um, so auto poster allows you to easily schedule multiple messages across multiple social profiles in kind of one simple step. 
Um, so the first thing you want to do is create a message. So that's the first thing I'll need to do. So if I just create um, a basic one just to test with, test and then click save. As you can see, I've got that Facebook test message there. If I go back to auto poster now, I've now got different options to start creating my posts. So I would first of all select the social profile that I want to use. So as you can see, I've got all these different ones. As my post, as my sorry, my message is a Facebook um, type, I'm only going to be selecting the Facebook account today. But if say I've got loads of different messages, loads of different types, I can basically just select um, all the different social accounts that I wish to use for those messages. So once I've done that, select the message here with the tick box. And each message that you do choose, um, it will be posted with each profile from the corresponding network. So for example, if I did have um, two Facebook messages, for example, and two different Facebook pages um, that I've connected to Octopost, so Gate Social Plus, um, then what it's going to do is it's actually going to schedule both messages once on both pages. And then I want to hit next. And then I'm taken to the schedule. So I can either just use my queue settings. So again, like we spoke about earlier, you've got different queue settings for each social media account. Otherwise, I can use a time range. So I could might have like a certain week slot that I want to um, the post to be scheduled across. And then I've got the different times that I can set here. So I might want it from 9 till 10 a.m. And I can also select the weekdays um, that these are, are posted on. So I might not want the weekend, for example. You can just set there. And then you just want to click generate schedule. And then you just need to um, approve each of one of these because it kind of creates them as drafts. So as you can see, it's, we only have the one message, so it's scheduled this here. And then you can just accept them. So they are kind of created as draft posts by default. So you will need to approve um, each one for it to actually be used. And then we've got analytics. Um, this campaign hasn't actually had any posts sent out yet, so we can't actually see the analytics. So I'm just going to go into a different campaign to show you what the analytics looks like. So as you can see, um, you've got it, this basically shows you um, this specific campaign's performance and you've got graphs of like uh, the posts sent, links clicked, um, conversions and also campaign engagement stats um, and like your, your top engaging and converting posts. Um, so it's really useful um, just to kind of get an overview of how this campaign is done. And again, just clicking on these um, graphs here so it gives them a bigger view below. Um, and what you can also do is you can also filter as well. Um, so you might want to only see the posts within this campaign from Twitter, for example, or uh, from a certain profile. So you can do that here if needed. We've then got the settings for the campaign as well. Uh, so these simply allow you to change the campaign details, any tags that you associated uh, with that campaign. So you can add or edit those. And you can also set a colour for the campaign um, and this can help you differentiate posts for specific campaigns in the main calendar, um, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and here you can also edit the UTM tags as well for this specific campaign. So the UTM tags that we um, were doing in the settings at the start is kind of the default for the whole account. But you can actually change this on a campaign level as well. So that's um, basically all the different kind of features um, that are held within a specific campaign. Um, below the, the campaign, uh, so you've got your whole list of campaigns here. Below that, you've got the main calendar. So before we were showing you kind of the calendar of just that campaign. This calendar is the calendar of all your different campaigns and all the different posts um, that are being sent out from those different campaigns. So as you can see, we've got lots of different colours here. Um, so that's what I was kind of saying with, you know, it's quite useful to give each campaign a different colour if you can, because um, it can just help you differentiate quickly 
which post is from which campaign. So um, if you've got, as you can see, these posts here up, up above are kind of greyed out slightly. Um, and this is because these posts have already gone out. So the brighter um, coloured ones are ones that are scheduled to go out soon and then these ones have already gone out. If I click on one that has already gone out, so for example this one, it will give me a preview of what that post was and I can also click uh, view report. And this will just basically give me analytics for this particular post. So link clicks, conversions, comments, likes, shares and impressions. So that can be really useful um, to take a look at. And then if I click on a post that hasn't gone out yet, rather than the view report, I've actually got a little edit button. Um, so if maybe I want to just change it slightly, um, what I can do is click edit and that will bring up your kind of usual post um, window where I can just change any details needed. And again, I can also filter this um, by things like such as the campaign tags, um, campaign names, profiles, networks and stuff like that. So if you need to kind of um, quickly get to a, a certain campaign or post then you can use these and again I can also click new post from the main calendar as well um, if I'm not maybe not sure which campaign I'm putting that in yet I can just select the campaign here rather than going to the campaign itself first the next section is the approval section um, so here you can see a list of all the posts that have been saved or made into drafts and from here, you can either edit them, discard them or approve them. Um, so if you click on an individual post like this one, it will give you a history of the post, such as, you know, who created it and also the ability to add a note and mention any other users. If you do have multiple, such as on an enterprise level account. So, for example, I might want to write a small note. I can even tag people as well. If needed and just over here I can either delete it, edit it or approve it. So that's the approval section. Um, we've then got content. Um, so with content, rather with, with Gator Social Plus, um, apart from just sharing you know your own original content, um, you know, curating interesting articles from the web is actually an excellent way to kind of provide your audience with valuable content. Um, you can add topics of interest here, such as um, marketing, for example, as we've done, um, and you can discover kind of the trending posts for that topics. So it kind of works like a search engine. And then you can either, you know, read these articles, share the articles. Um, so, for example, if I'm interested in this article, I could first maybe read the article. And if I'm happy with it and I think, you know, I'd like to share this with um, my own followers, then what I would do is just click this button here. And as you can see, it kind of creates the post um, as, as your own, but using that link to that article. And then you can kind of just edit the text um, if, if you need to as well. And then just as normal, you can change all your different settings for that post. You've also got a little emoji um, addition that you can add into posts as well, which I forgot to mention earlier. Um, so emojis have been, you know, proven to um, increase, you know, interaction with posts. So if you, if you do feel like it's appropriate to add an emoji, then you can as well um, with our posting tool. Um, so yeah, rather than just, um, this is basically the Gator Social Plus content, you've also got an integration that you can do with Feedly as well, if you've got a Feedly Pro account. Um, so obviously Feedly kind of gives you newspapers, articles, magazines and blogs and stuff like that. If you do connect with your Feedly Pro account then you can do similar to this and just kind of share those posts from Feedly um, to your own accounts in Gator Social Plus as well. So the next section I'm going to um, go through is the streams section. Um, so streams is basically a section that allows you to monitor social media channels in real time and engage with your audience. Um, so the first thing you'll need to do is actually select the profile or page that you want to be used to request the data from your social network. So for example, I could click this plus on the column here and then it might be Twitter that I want to use. And I might want to see anyone that mentions our 
account so I click mentions and then click add profile and as you can see this gives you all the different mentions anyone that mentions spot the UK all in one place and there's lots of different ones you can create depending on um, the network so if for example LinkedIn I might just want to kind of see everyone on that page in one place and then what I can do is I can either um, respond to them directly from this stream like so you can like the post retweet it comment on it if it's Facebook um, so yeah everything is kind of just all in one place um, which kind of just makes it a bit easier and you can create different tabs of these streams as well so you might want maybe all your Facebook ones in one place all your Twitter ones in one place or maybe you've got different kind of topics or categories it just kind of helps um, keep everything um, in the right place we've then got inboxes as well um, so this basically collects all your inbound social conversations to one place um, allowing you and your team members to just manage and track responses a bit better um, so besides the option to just reply to people the inbox also allows you to like share or send a direct message to that user who initiated the conversation um, and also you've got um, basically two stat stat statuses for each conversation so it's either open or closed so once you mark an item as closed um, it'll kind of be removed from the inbox feed um, and that just kind of helps um, keep it you know you want to maybe try and keep it as like a zero inbox so you keep on top of everything and make sure that everything gets replied to um, so once it's closed it gets removed and then if there's any comments or replies that will be reopened any conversation that's already been seen will be greyed out as well um, so once I click on it it will, it will kind of um, grey that out the next time I go back onto it um, and that can just kind of again help you keep track of what you've seen what you haven't um, so there's different kind of inboxes that we can set up so Twitter again it's kind of like mentions replies and direct messages whereas LinkedIn it's just comments um, with Facebook it'll be anyone that tags um, tags your account or comments or direct messages um, so yeah it's really useful and you can also use the search function here so just this little icon here um, and then you can search for particular conversations um, and just use the filters to narrow down the search by maybe st status or network or profile as well and you can also see like a short history here of any actions that were taken with that post um, if I click here I can also close it reopen it mark it as unread or assign it to someone if I've got multiple users so it's really useful if you have got you know multiple users all working um, on keeping your inboxes down then you can kind of assign different conversations to people and make sure that you know no two people are replying to the same person at once and again just similar to the streams function you can add different tabs um, to categorize um, all your different inboxes and stuff into one place We've then got the advocacy with Gator Social Plus. Um, so this allows you to share content with employees and brand advocates, um, which allows them to post um, your messages. And this can basically just help broaden the reach of your content. So, um, for example, if I go into our employee board here, as you can see, you've got a whole list of messages. Um, and these are messages that advocates can post um, when creating your posts in the publishing section um, if you remember there was a little button that said copy to board and um, that we mentioned earlier um, so this is basically where these messages go when you click that so you'd want to click copy to board if say you do want to to let your employees then go and repost that message if you want to create a new message um, you can do that here just click new message you can write up your message select the social network you want the message to be shared on and then you select the campaign you want the message to be associated with just like a normal post um, you would do with and then you can also um, set the time and date you want the message to be published to the board so you might not want it to be available immediately for people to post so you can set a time um, and date when that becomes, becomes available for them and then you can also set the topics um, that are associated with this post so um, when when advocates kind of sign up to, to get involved with the advocacy 
they can select the topics that they're interested in or topics that they wish to kind of see posts on. So um, yeah, you want to kind of just make sure you, you give them some sort of topics that are associated. So maybe if this is a blog, I might want to give it a blog um, topic or maybe if it's to do with marketing, again, just email marketing, for example, and then set that. I can also set it as important as well. Um, if so, maybe you want, you definitely want all your employees to, um, you know, repost this this message. Um, then marking it as important kind of puts it to the top um, of the board. And you can also set an expiry as well. Um, and it can either be set individually, like here, or per a board um, in the settings, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, so you might want, not want it to be posted by advocates in, say, another week. Maybe it's for an event that's in a few days. Um, obviously, there's no point in them reposting it after the event's finished. So um, it can be useful to have an expiry on there. Um, advocacy messages also have two statuses. You've got scheduled ones and published ones. So a scheduled message is um, available at the published date that you select and then obviously published means the message is already available for sharing. We've then got the topics which we were just talking about so you've got your list of topics here and uh, with topics obviously you, you can associate each um, message with one or more topics and then the advocates filter that depending on their interests um, they can also be assigned directly from the same menu that's used for copying messages. So when you do actually create your post um, to start with, you can select the topic there um, if you want as well. Um, we would advise, you know, try and keep them to a minimum um, and make sure they're clear. Otherwise, you know, these are topics that the advocates are going to be filtering by. So you don't want to have like loads and loads of topics and not, not very clear names. So, yeah, try and keep them um, to a minimum if you can. We've then got the suggestions section, and this can be actually turned on or off. Um, and this feature basically just allows advocates to recommend content for sharing on the social advocacy board. And then an Octopost, um, so go to Social Plus user can then approve or reject the suggestion. Um, so for example, here we've got Andrew who's suggested this um, post go out. Um, so as, an, as a Go to Social Plus user, I can go into the account and then I can select whether this gets accepted or rejected. Um, if you do decide to reject a submission, it will send a notification to that advocate immediately. Um, so what we would suggest is including just a little review note with maybe a short explanation as to why and you'll get the option to do that when you click reject. If you do choose to accept the suggestion, then the advocate will see the item on their board as pending review. Um, they won't actually be notified until you publish it um, onto the board based on that suggestion and only once you create a message from the submission and post it on the board then the item um, status on the board will change to published and then the advocate can see it. There is also actually a browser extension that advocates can um, download so when they find an article they'd like to put forward as a, as a suggestion um, they can just click the browser extension icon and that will just quickly kind of bring up a post kind of um, window like, like you do with the normal browser extension and that'll just allow them to kind of suggest that quickly. And then in the advocates section you've just got a list of your current advocates and also the option to invite new advocates. And you've just kind of got an overview of their email, any shares they've done in the last seven days and when they were last seen. And then you've got the settings for your advocacy board so again, like the name, um, as we spoke speaking about earlier, you, you want kind of an expiration on most messages. Um, so you can either do that on an individual message basis or you can just do it um, as a default for the whole board. You've also got the option to turn off or on a leaderboard. Um, the leaderboard basically kind of is to help motivate your advocates um, to be reposting your messages. Um, it just kind of gives a bit of incentive um, to get people, you know, sharing the messages and try and get people to click on those messages. But you can turn that off if, if you don't want it on there. You can also um, either enable or disable the advocate content suggestions as well. So that's up to you if you want to have that available. And then the other settings you've got is just notifications. 
any sign-ups, and any custom branding of the advocate board. So I'll just show you what the advocacy board actually looks like to an advocate as well. Um, so they won't actually see the Gator Social Plus as you know you as a user would do. They would actually see um, kind of a screen like this. So they would log in through board.octopus.com. Then here they've got the whole employee board. So these are all the different um, messages that they can repost. So they just hit share. And that'll bring this up. As you can see, it's my, my social media. And then set a time and date, any emojis, and then just click share now. So it's up to them what they wish to share. Then here you've got the suggestions. I don't actually have any impending status, but if I did, it would list them at these here and any shares that I've done. And then this little icon here is just that leaderboard that I was um, telling you guys about. So this is kind of just a bit of an incentive of, you know, who's got the most shares and I can do that by clicks as well. And we then think it's got the social profiles for that advocate here and you can add more just above using that little plus icon. And then these are just the settings for my profile. So that is the advocacy board. We've then got the analytics section. So um, with analytics, you've got lots of different categories um, that you know you can see reporting on. So for acquisition, you kind of see like a funnel of the posts, impressions that they make, clicks and conversions. You've got some graphs on the number of different posts that have been shared, any conversions and stuff like that. And again, all of these can be filtered by the date and time range and filters for like network profile, etc. You've also got engagement reporting as well, so such as the number of posts sent, engagement rates and metrics. And there's also a heat map, um, which is really useful, um, of engagement. So the larger the bubble um, actually means the more posts in this period. And then the colour of the bubble indicates the level of en engagement. So the greener the bubble, the higher the level of engagement. And this kind of over time will give you a good idea of you know when the best time to post is. Um, so yeah, it can be useful just to kind of see when it's performing best. So as you can see, this one was really good at engagement here. This one, not so much. And again, you've got your top engaging posts and campaigns. And you can also download a PDF of these different reports as well. Um, so you don't always have to go um, here to, you know, maybe you want to show it to your manager or, for example, um, you can just export this as well. We've also got audience reporting, which just shows um, an overview of your followers and trends and stuff and demographics. Got content reporting, which shows you the types of content which has the best engagement. So here we've got the top engaging links, converting links. We also have activities. And assignments just gives you kind of the advocates overview um, for reporting and then also advocacy and then we've also got reports and with the reports you can schedule or create a report on a certain activity you've also got the option to download these as CSVs as well so you can create reports on lots of different things And then finally, we've got exports. Um, so you can either set up a regular export for, say, clicks um, and when and who to send to, etc. Um, so this is where you would find all of these and create new exports by just clicking the new export button. And you can just select all the different settings that you want for that export and where to send it to. So that is um, kind of the overview of Gator Social um, Plus features. Um, if you do have any questions, please just let us know either email um, you know, our support team or, or get in touch um, with your account manager and we'll be able to answer any questions for you. Um, but yeah, thank, thank you for listening, guys. And yeah, any questions, just let us know. Cheers.